Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. So you've recently decided to get into the world of PC gaming, but given that your seven-year-old computer struggles just to boot into Windows, you find yourself wondering aloud, how in the world am I gonna run those fancy new AAA titles that my favorite streamers are playing on $1,000 hardware? But wait! The listed minimum system requirements on the side of the box, or <coughs> excuse me, web page, actually seem pretty close to what you have. So why is everybody running out buying prohibitively expensive hardware just to play games? Well, first off, on a console, most games are tweaked to run in a predictable, consistent manner on one specific hardware configuration, or at most, like, five. But running well may mean different things to different people, and this is particularly true of PC gamers. So typically, the minimum requirements you see on Steam or on a Game Studios website are close to the bare minimums to get the game running, or at least walking. We're talking low quality settings at a low resolution with still low frame rates. And while this actually might be good enough for a lot of people, many others would probably be left feeling unsatisfied. From time to time, game studios also base their minimum requirements on the hardware that is technically compatible at all, rather than on a minimum bar of acceptable performance. For example, a game might be coded in such a way that it requires the graphics card to support certain instructions to produce specific visual effects. So, if the earliest GPUs that support everything the game needs are, say, five years old, then the minimum requirements might list a GPU from that era, even if the game might run so slowly at anything other than absolutely minimum on that card that it looks more like a pixelated slideshow than an actual game. So in these sorts of situations, minimum requirements are true minimums, with the game not being playable at any settings if your hardware isn't up to that level. On the flip side, other game developers have been known to post minimum requirements above what you may be able to get away with. This can happen for a number of reasons. Oculus famously set a very high minimum spec for the Rift on its release to ensure that anyone who followed their guidelines would have a smooth experience across the platform. And in other cases, game studios have made assumptions about what they think most players will be using instead of spending a ton of R&D time validating very old stuff, and they've effectively used the minimum spec as a way of saying, well, Anything under this might work, and you're welcome to try, but we just won't guarantee that the experience will run well. Adding even further to the confusion are the recommended specifications, a term about as devoid of meaning as a janitorial log in a gas station bathroom. Since there isn't any kind of standard for what recommended means, you'll sometimes see configurations that might still not be good enough to run the game on high settings with decent frame rates, while others will list components that are obviously overkill, like eight-thread processors for games that can't take advantage of more than four. So okay then, Linus, if I want to make sure my computer can actually handle my new game, what the heck am I supposed to do then? Well, figure out what kind of experience you want. Are you okay with running a game at console-like 30 FPS? Or is buttery smooth 60 frames per second performance something that you have to have? And what kind of trade-offs are you okay with making between that performance and image quality? Once you've decided, the answer is benchmarks. There are plenty of resources available online where popular games are tested on different CPU, graphics card, and quality setting combinations at different price points by independent reviewers. You can use this information to decide if it's worth it to upgrade and how expensive of a part you might need. And you actually might end up pleasantly surprised to find out how good of an experience you can have with a mainstream processor and a sub $200 graphics card these days. But even if it looks like you would need to spend $1,000 that you just don't have on a brand new system to get the experience you would have wanted, at least I can say this. Don't fret too much, because then you can also save yourself the $70 that you might have spent on a game that turned out to be more style than substance.
Because who says you can't have style and substance? That's what Squarespace is all about. With Squarespace, you can build a beautiful and functional website yourself without any prior coding knowledge. It's all cloud-based, so you just pick one of their gorgeous templates, drag in the photos and graphics and text that you want, and boom, you have a high-speed, reliable website with tons of great features. And if you have any trouble whatsoever, they have 24 seven support available via live chat and email. It costs just $12 a month and you get a free domain if you buy Squarespace for the year. So why not go check it out? Oh, oh, we have a new feature, customer accounts for your online store. Now your customers can save their payment and shipping info and you can even keep an eye on their shopping trends. That's fantastic. So every Squarespace site has had commerce for a a while now, and now you've got this additional feature. So start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. When you sign up, use offer code TECHQUICKIE, which we'll have linked below, to get 10% off on your first purchase. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other channels. Don't forget to leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fast as Possible videos, and subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our videos.